Welcome to Key Points for October. This month, our take on the further surge in inflation, why we believe that central banks have not lost their inflation-fighting credentials, and why events around the property developer Evergrande in China are unlikely to prove systemic from a financial market perspective. Now, there's no doubt we're seeing, again, very elevated inflation numbers coming through really across the world. This, is, of course, is partly a function of base effects. In other words, we're comparing prices today to very low levels in the midst of the pandemic a year ago. So it's perhaps not surprisingly that we're seeing prices pick up. Economies have opened up, prices have been normalizing. But as these base effects begin to run off, in other words, as time goes by, these very low readings will not be picked up in the comparison, we are likely to see a moderation in inflation. But other components might prove a little stickier. In the case of the supply side, uh, there are still bottlenecks. We are seeing business investment, capital spending picking up. But that will take time really to alleviate these issues. Demand is also still running at a very high level. Particularly in the goods side, we had expected more of a transition from goods to services. It is happening, but not quite at the pace that we had been anticipating. So when we aggregate that up, it is likely that inflation will begin to moderate, but it might not be until perhaps the late spring or summer of next year that we can really point to the fact that inflation has peaked and indeed is beginning to move more persistently back down towards target or even below targets. But of course, the central banks are not sitting back idly. This takes us to our second point. Of the 43 that we cover, 25% have been hiking interest rates, the latest being the central bank of Norway. The Fed, the Bank of England, the ECB have also been very explicit about the removing or removal of uh, quantitative easing, in other words, tapering of the stimulus that they're providing. And in the case of the Fed, 50% of Fed members have implied that they think that rates there will be raised in 2022. The other half think it will be 2023 before the first rate hike, pretty much in line with our own estimates. But all of that gives us an indication that central banks really globally are still focused on inflation and they will act if they believe it's proving to be more problematic than they had been expecting. Now, our third point is around Evergrande. This was the largest uh, Chinese property developer by market cap. And of course, you'll have been hearing that there's fears about it defaulting. Now, our view on this is that it's likely to be contained and it will not be a systemic event, perhaps as Lehman was uh, back in the financial crisis in 2007 and 8. Our reason for this is that the Chinese authorities have been very concerned about uh, excess leverage, speculation uh, and the shadow banking system and have given plenty warning that they want to see leverage in companies being reduced. In the case of property, President Xi Jinping has been very clear that he believes that houses are for living in, not speculating upon. So this is almost being used as an example uh, to others that they need to be cognizant of the high levels of, 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 uh, of debt, of leverage, and uh, trying to minimize any kind of speculation. As a result of that, we think the issue will be contained. Certainly, if you're an equity holder or overseas bond holder, you're likely to be severely impacted by this. But small investors and those who have put down payments for property are likely to be protected by the authorities. So this is unlikely to get out of hand. It is, of course, having an impact on global financial markets. There have been some increase in fears around that. We've seen in the case of equity markets a pullback. Some of the momentum has been unwound. We are seeing bull bear indicators move quite appreciably lower. But we think this is something that's manageable. We think the underlying drivers of both credit and equities are still decent. And over time, these markets are likely to push higher. But we are concerned about some of the loss of momentum and we need to keep a careful eye on that. Remember, the full report, as always, can be read on zurich.com forward slash MSME.